Hello and welcome. I am Trey Ratcliffe uh, coming to you from my studio here in Queenstown, New Zealand. It's a warm summer day outside, but I'll be editing a photo of cold, rainy London. All right, this will be aimed a bit more at beginners. Like, let's say you're not that used to Aurora HDR 2018 yet and you want to get to know it better. Um, so I kind of go slow here. Okay. Um, at the end, I'll put a more intermediate slash advanced tip if you want to do a panorama in Aurora. Uh, but here, let's just take this part slow. Okay, so I've taken three photos here, dark, medium, and light, and I've checked on alignment, okay? Uh, you don't have to take three photos in. You could do a single JPEG or a single RAW. Um, all these things work great in Aurora, okay? But in this case, I'm just sort of doing the basic bracketed shot. Okay, so now I will click Create HDR. And here we are. Um, you can see that something already a little bit magical has happened, and that's sort of the magic sauce of Aurora HDR 2018. I think it's one of the reasons we were named um, uh, Apple's Mac App of the Year, which is amazing. I mean, there must be hundreds of thousands of apps that go into the running, but somehow we won. So let's look at a before and after. I can click this little eyeball. This is before. So this is the middle exposure, and this is the after. Okay. We're going to make some more changes to it. We're going to zhuzh it up a little bit, but uh, it really looks pretty good. The other way you can see before and after, by the way, you click this little thing, and you can go back and forth, and back and forth, and see that it's done something. You can see the initial HDR effect is pretty mild, right? There's nothing too extreme. And of course, the reason you want to do all this is because the human eye can see so much more than the camera sensor, right? So, so much more sensitive. Um, so let's turn this off. Okay. Uh, you have all these controls over here on the right that give you all this powerful stuff. Um, I know for beginners, this can be a little scary. So in a lot of ways, you don't even have to touch those. Don't even, we won't worry about those for the beginner, for the beginning part of this beginner video. Instead, you may want to click this thing and this opens up all of your presets. Okay. The presets are extremely powerful. Now there's different categories of presets. Okay. Um, you can go up here, there's a basic landscape, realistic HDR, so on and so forth. So for example, if we wanted like, uh, this is sort of an architecture shot, okay? This is close to the mayor's office. Um, and so you can go down here and click on different ones like architecture realistic, okay? Bam, that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? And before and after, um, you just click on them and have fun, just experiment, right? Be like a kid with a box of 128 crayons and just, you know, start cranking away. Look at this one. Uh, architecture look two. That looks pretty epic, doesn't it? Uh, architecture look one, two. I guess it's going to get more extreme as we go up here. Three. That looks, that looks pretty radical, doesn't it? Um, again, look at it before and after. Before and after. Now, here's a hot tip. If you are using these presets, say, like, you like it, but, like, oh, it's a little... A little too much. Like, let's just let's go to commercial break. So what you can do is you can dial this back here. Do you see this amount? Say if you only have fifty percent of the look, drop it down to about fifty. All right, this is a percentage here, by the way. Um, see how that works? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? There's another grouping of um, presets here. I recommend. Uh, uh, this is me, Trey Ratcliffe, but uh, other great photographers did these too. Serge and Captain Chemo. So if you go here, click on Trey Ratcliffe, it's me. Uh, some of mine are very basic, some are extreme. Um, I'm all over the map. It's kind of like my personality. It's like you, you never know what's going to happen next. Quite unpredictable, even for me. Sometimes I feel like I have no free will and things just, you know, happen. Um, but yeah, these are, uh, these are really fun. I hope you have some fun times with these. Look at that one. That was pretty cool. It's called button the metaphysical. Maybe that's a little too extreme, so you might want to dial it down a little bit. There we go. See, is it that easy and fun? Easy and fun. And then when you're done with it, um, you can export it. Then you maybe you're round tripping from Lightroom, and then you know when you save it, it goes back into Lightroom, or you can export it to uh, whatever you want. You can open it inside other programs, uh, so on and so forth. So you see, we did all of this stuff without even clicking on any of these controls. Okay. Um, 
I will show you a little bit about the controls right now, maybe just two or three of my favorite sliders, because you can think of a preset as sort of a beginning stage, and then you could add your own je ne sais quoi, okay, to this, uh, to this London shop. So um, one of the newest and coolest sliders here is HDR Enhance. And you might notice, by the way, that as um, you click on different presets, that these sliders move around, okay? That's all a preset is, is it's a series of sliders, like the internet is a series of tubes. All right, so let me turn this off. And one of my favorite sliders here is HDR Enhance. So you can see it's already up to 67, but if I drop this down, you'll see the HDR looks, gets a little bit less extreme, okay? Or you can go really high and it becomes a bit more extreme, okay? You can get the HDR look even crazier than that, right? If you really like this look, which a lot of people do, I certainly do. And that's down here in the HDR structure area. All right. So you can really increase the amount, um, increase the boost. And you can see it's getting kind of cray cray. Drop down the softness, which gives you kind of harder lines. Uh, of course, we don't want to do all that. It looks, I'm just, that's just for example, just illustrating the purpose of what these things are for. So that's really cool. Okay. Then my other favorite section here is image radiance. You can slide this up, slide it down, and you get see how it gets that glowy kind of look, right? Um, sometimes it might look like it's a little bit soft or out of focus, so maybe you just want to do it to some parts of the photo. If you want to learn how to do different things to different parts of the photo, part two of this video, which continues right after this, I'll show you more of that, okay? How to use brushes and stuff. All kinds of fun tools. I really do, uh, even if you're a beginner, I know all this stuff is scary. You're like, oh, I don't know what this means, but don't worry. Uh, just come play with it. Uh, vignetting is always fun. I think it'll look good here. A little bit of vignetting. Oh, yeah, cool. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, so once again, a before and after, before and after. And I guess that's my overall message for beginners is just, you know, don't, don't be afraid. Uh, come in here, uh, play with the presets, um, and that can be enough, all right? Uh, don't feel compelled to get to know all of these different controls. You'll get to know it over time, but you can see you can just come in here in about uh, a minute, minute and a half, and have a completely new photo that's alive and vibrant. Okay, now moving right into part two, where I'm going to show you how I process a panorama that I took not too far from my home here. Okay, now that we've finished that kind of beginnery one, let's do something a bit more intermediate or even um, advanced, I might say. All right, so what's going on here? Um, I flew the quadcopter over to my friend's house. Uh, he's my neighbor. And I wanted to get a shot of his house. You can see it right there. And, uh, and he's got a beautiful view of the Remarkables right there. And I kind of want to get all of it into one. Okay, so some other things went into this. Now I'm gonna put the finishing touches in, in Aurora, but I'll go ahead and tell you the, the genesis of it, okay? Because it did require a bit of work outside of Aurora, honestly. Um, so let's jump over to here, Lightroom. And these this came from four quadcopter shots, okay? So this is shot number one, two, three, four, okay? So you can see basically what I did is, let me go ahead and make it full screen, is I took a shot aiming down, okay? And then I went up, up, up with like lots of overlap, okay? So that was kind of step one, I took those four shots. And then all I did really is I made a panorama out of them, okay? Um, I won't go into how I did that. Maybe you know how, maybe you don't. <laughs> Basically, you could just right click on them in, um, in, in here. So, uh, so I can shift click all of them. I can right click and I can say uh, photo merge to panorama. Okay, easy. Okay, and then I took the result and I brought it into Aurora. Okay, because uh, I really want to give it, you know, a little oomph, a little heave ho action. And I did turn on uh, tone mapping, right? This is, so basically at this point, it's just like a single raw file, you know, because it was made out of four different raw files. So I look at a before, after, before, after. That's before I've done anything in here, right? But I still want to make a few more changes, okay? I like to zhuzh up the sky a little bit, give it a little bit more drama. 
Um, I'm finding some of the greens and yellows down here to be a little unsatisfactory. They seem a little washed out. Uh, sometimes this is an HDR effect you get where it feels like, like a fine layer of volcanic ash has laid itself upon um, the trees and fauna and flora sort of thing. So let's get, uh, let's get started immediately by adding a layer, okay? Uh, add a new adjustment layer here. And let's just zhuzh up the sky. Okay, so I'll do a little HDR enhance here, looking good. A little smart tone, not too much. But I do like how the mountains are kind of purpley in the distance, right? Um, and let's do a little denoise. I don't think there's much noise up there, but we'll just smooth it out just in case. I do find sometimes there's noise up, up within our hills, up within our sky. Um, a little bit of image radiance to make the sky glow a little bit. A little bit of vividness, not too much, a little bit. Okay, cool. Now I'll just brush that into the sky. Brush, I'll brush a little bigger. Click and brush, click and brush. There we go. Maybe I'll amp it up even a little more. Okay, so let's go to HDR structure. There we go, look at that. Oh yeah, looking good. Now let's worry about like the middle and bottom area. Okay, let's just make it try to feel more green and more alive. Okay, um, it is flatly lit here for sure. You can tell you can tell the sun's not hitting anything because you don't see any shadows, right? I mean, it's obvious now that I say it, but when you don't have direct light hitting green stuff, it comes out a bit, you know, less green. Um, it's amazing, you know. I think as photographers, even even I take this for granted. The color of a tree um, when the cloud is, when the sun is behind a cloud versus the color of a tree when the sun is not behind a cloud and hitting it directly is dramatically different. There's like two completely different colors. So we're, I'm gonna try to bring up the color so it's kind of in between, okay? So let's add another layer here, new adjustment layer. And uh, let's increase the, um, the contrast always seems to make it a bit more inky. Uh, so let's pull up the contrast, see what it's doing down below there. Okay, it's good. I mean, just a little bit of smart tone just to bring up some of those. See, it made some of the trees like really quite black. So let's just, well, let's just pull up the blacks then just to get rid of those bits. There we go. Cool, maybe a little too much contrast. Okay, well, we won't do it everywhere, okay? So we'll paint it in, but like, see how these trees right here are kind of black? And these are a little too black. I don't really like it there. So when we paint it in, we'll do a less extreme right there. The other nice thing you can do is you can add image radiance and um, uh, maybe a little bit of warmth. And this will warm things up a little bit too, okay? So now everywhere where I didn't really find the colors too satisfactory, I'm just gonna paint in. Let's change our opacity down to uh, 50 or 60 or so. Okay, so just kind of painting in. I'll show you my masking area here. Let me turn on the mask. Mask. Oh, so I'm just gonna paint it in around here. This is kind of where I remember it looking good. Um, it's been sort of a warm, hot summer here for, I mean, hot for us. It doesn't, it rarely gets above 75 degrees here, but we had a few days that were like 80 and people were like, oh, I'm feeling the vapors. It's not bad though. Um, but it's just, just enough to turn some of that grass a little bit brown, you know, like happens up in Northern California. So I'm just kind of painting over the parts that seem just a bit, mm, like they could use a little bit of oomph, okay? There, something like that, there looks good. Um, and then let's turn off the mask, cool. So we can look, kind of look at the before and after what we just did, you can turn on off the eyeball here. So now it just feels a bit more alive, a bit more poppy. Okay, and let's just HDR up the bottom a little bit more, okay? Just, just for fun, okay? So I'm gonna do a little bit more HDR enhance and just kind of paint over the bottom here a little bit. Inconsistent, I, uh, I don't like to do um, the same thing everywhere. You know, just have like little trails of very HDR-ish stuff off going here and there, so the whole thing is kind of full of, full of surprises and full of light. Um, here we go, perfect. Let's turn that uh, mask off. Awesome, and let's add one more like extreme glow layer, okay? And we're not gonna do this everywhere. This is just being a few little surprise spots. So I'm gonna do an image radiance here. Increase that, increase the shadows. Yeah, 
So I'll sprinkle, sprinkle this here on the pond. That's what I'm thinking. The pond is nice. It's getting a bit purpley brown there, but that's actually the color it was. I could change the color so it's like all blue, but it seems like it's kind of a fake, um, you know, like an amusement park color dye color. Um, these trees here are still reading pretty black, so I'll make another layer and pull up the uh, Smart Tone right there. Come on, Smart Tone, come on up. There we go. And then I'll just paint in right where those trees I felt were a little too black and it's too black foresty over there. Just line that up. And there we go. Okay, so we can kind of look at, and this is just in um, Aurora, but we can look at it before and after, before and after. There you go. So that's a hot tip for you. Um, if you do want to make a panorama um, in, uh, in Photoshop or in Lightroom, uh, don't forget that you can bring it into Aurora just to put some really cool finishing touches on it. All right. I uh, love you guys. Hope you enjoyed that tip. Um, there's a lot more of these things coming. Uh, I'll try to keep them fresh. I'm doing quite a bit of traveling this year, but I can make these on the road. I'm using Aurora so many times a day. You guys don't even know. So I'm I'm always finding out new little tricks and tips, and I will share them with you. All right, guys um, and gals, uh, see you soon. Bye.